310, Distributed Data Processing. This is the third week, second video lecture. So while you guys were on a break, I just decided to add an additional package, the com healthcare system dot exception package. And inside that package, I added all these classes. These classes are the ones that handle any exception on the system. So for instance, if we have a database connection problem, then we have a database connection exception class. And notice what this database connection exception does. It has a constructor. All it does is create a message saying connection, whatever, whatever, is being passed as the string in the constructor and then it returns a code. The code is 10,030 or whatever they decided. You know, it's up to the whoever creates the, the system to create these codes in database connection exceptions. Now this guy extends from a database connection or DB exception. I'm sorry, not from a database connection, from a DB exception. So the database connection exception extends or inherits from the database exception. If we go into that one, it's another class here in the exception um, package. This one, it also, in a similar fashion, it has a database exception constructor, and except that this one, it returns a code of 10,001. <laughs> so it's like something was wrong with the database, but it wasn't really a connection, it's something else. So I'm going to return a code of 10,001 in case something happens. Now this exception extends from a healthcare system exception. So as you can see, the, the most concrete, the most specialized class is the database connection exception. One less specialized or specific is the database exception. And one much less specialized and specific is the healthcare system exception. Look at the healthcare system exception. First of all, it extends from an exception, which by the way, exception is a Java language class. You don't have to create it. This is the class that all exceptions inherit from. Okay? So this is it, the healthcare system exception. And the constructor has a string. And notice what the code is. The code is 10,000. So something was wrong with the system. It wasn't really a database connection or a database issue, but something was wrong with the system. I'm just going to raise a healthcare system exception, and the code is 10,000. Pretty good. OK? And you can print that message. And notice that that healthcare system has a message and a code. So all the one, all the other ones that inherit from this one, this is the message and the code that they will populate. Okay. What about this other exception, the saving database exception? The saving database exception is code 10,010. It's also a DB exception. And then there's the searching database exception, which is also a database exception, but the code is 10,020. <laughs> so basically, you want to be able to differentiate, hey, we had a problem searching in the database versus we had a problem saving database versus connecting to the database. So you create an exception class for each one of those. Okay. Do you have to do this every time that you create a web application? The answer is yes, you would do it if you do it this way. But if you create your web application using Spring, which is an MVC uh, framework, it already has all these exceptions ready for you. So you don't really have to create any exceptions. They're pretty much all handled through the framework. Okay, so we're starting to see all the different differences 
between, yes, this is a four-tier web application, remember? This is a web, a four-tier web application, a four-tier web, uh, web design architecture um, application. But hey, this is the old way of doing it. And and I'm not going to make you do your web application this way. I'm just going to show you this example so that you guys can appreciate the difference later on when we when you build it with Spring and Hibernate. Okay? So that's enough of that with all the exceptions. By putting the exceptions in the project, that pretty much clear out all the errors that I was having in the JSP and in the in the um in the in the in the project all the errors that I was having. So let's go back to the patient record database. So the patient record database, remember, this is the guy patient record DB. This is the one this is the guy that knows how to persist and read data from the database. Okay? We have a save record. We have a build query. We have a get patient record. We have a get patient records, and that's it. Now, this class inherits from something called the DB handler. So let's take a look at the DB handler. The DB handler is the guy that knows how to connect to the database. So look at this. The DB handler knows about connection and about drivers and stuff like that. So remember that little piece of Java, script inside Java in the JSP that I showed you the first week? Where that JSP had everything. And it had the it had the connection to the database and it had the retrieving the records and it had displaying the data. I mean that JSP was like a whole application on its own. Now on a four tier web design architecture there is a specialized class that does that for you and it's called the DB handler okay and in fact the patient record DB inherits from this DB handler because he needs to know how to connect to the database so this guy in the constructor has something like hey I'm going to be going against a MySQL database and it's going to be called patient records which by the way we're going to have to create patient records, the database. So very quickly, I'm going to my query browser, okay, and I'm going to create a brand new database, new schema, and I'm going to call it patient records. So now I'm ready. I'm ready for this application. Okay? And it's going to be looking uh listening through port 3306 on local host with JDBC MySQL protocol. Um if there's any problem with the neat database handler, which is the one that initiates the connection to the database, then it's going to say could not load the JDBC driver or whatever. You know, and then this guy knows how to insert into the database, get results out of the database, you know, very nitty gritty database stuff. Okay? And this is the class that the patient record data DB will use. Except that the patient record DB is specialized on saving and retrieving patients in the database. Okay? So far so good? Okay, and the last piece of data that I want to bring over is the actual servlets. And we have two servlets. Let's go back to our diagram. Um, we already have the patient. That's the business logic. We already have the patient database. That's the data, data access layer. And we're supposed to have a patient record servlet. Okay? This is the guy that is going to handle all the requests from from the JSPs, the patient record servlet. So we're going to copy that guy, 
and we're going to have to create before we copy that guy we're going to have to create a separate package so you guys are getting the hang of this right packages are used to break down your project into its different components okay sometimes it's a one to one to the tiers and some other times it's not sometimes it's even um, broken into smaller pieces than the amount of modern uh, um, components that you have in your system com health care system dot servlets is it servlets or servlet servlets servlets so we create that guy and then we're going to put our servlet in there the patient record servlet and yes the patient record servlet extends from the HTTP servlet remember because the HTTP server is the one that knows how to do POST or do GET. Now in this case, we only implement do POST. What does that tell you? That we're not going to be able to retrieve patient records through the URL. Passing parameters through the URL. It's going to have to be um, through a form. Okay, and now this do post notice that it has a destination, and the destination is right here, hard coded on the code. Where is it gonna go once it's done? It's gonna go to post new patient record dot JSP. That's the view. Post new patient record dot JSP. Right there, the servlet knows where the destination is going to be because it's hard coded in the servlet. That's another major big difference when you use an MVC pattern framework. You will see that the destinations will not be hard coded in the code, they're external to the code and they will be handled through XML configuration. So you can actually plug and unplug views on the system live. Okay? And so what does this do post do? It, it pretty much gets all the parameters. Look at this. Gets all the parameters from the request, the CD, the address, blah blah blah, last name. It creates a brand new patient record, right? And it populates look at this. Oh my god. You have to set the address, you have to set the age, you have to set the CD. Guess what? If you do this with MV with Spring, which is the MVC framework, you don't have to do any of this stuff. This is all automatically done by the framework for you. The framework will go in inspect your entities. And it'll say, wait a minute, you want to get from the user, you want to get a patient. I know exactly what you mean. I know what exactly what a patient looks like. I will do all the getters and setters for you. And it will create the object out of the input automatically. So you don't have to worry about this stuff. Okay? So look at this, we're setting first name and stuff like that, and then we are creating a patient record view. Oh boy, what on earth is a patient record view? So it's one of those patient package Java classes, which does what? it has a patient record and it has a vector of patient records oh my god look what the patient record view does print record to JSP does that look familiar 
What is this? HTML. You got it. <laughs> wow. I would have never done it this way. No way. Imagine you're creating this is this is equivalent to a servlet. Not even a servlet. This is equivalent to like a like a a Java class that has been delegated by a servlet to produce HTML. So this patient record view contains a method that all it does is generates HTML out of an object. Yeah, loop through the different fields or stuff like that, right? But yeah, I guess you will have to in inspect the actual methods or attributes of the class before you could do that. So, so, so you guys see what happens, for instance, if let's say for some reason we decided to add a new field for patient. Are you starting to see all the different places that you have to change patient information just because you added one field more on the patient? On the view, on the business, on the everywhere. On, on, the, on the one that retrieves the data out of the database and creates a, br a brand new patient. On the one that it's the input from the user and you're creating a brand new patient out of that input. I mean, pretty much everywhere you will have to add a getter or a setter or, or a field, whatever. It's a maintenance nightmare. Okay. And then patient record view has a get all results. And get all results, it's basically looping through the vector of all their patient records and printing each one of them. This is what it calls the print record to JSP. Okay? Wow. Yeah, tell me about it. It's 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 a class that is actually producing the view of a record in HTML. Anyway, so what we were doing is we were we were dissecting the do post of the servlet. So this do post is the one that actually grabs all the data from the input from the request, creates the object, and then sends it to the view, okay? So that it will display it. So where does the destination being used? <coughs> Look at this. Look at this. Can you guys see this? See how destination changes depending on the logic? What happens if for some reason on the input you didn't get a social security number or a first name or a last name or an address or any one of those that are uh, mandatory fields? And notice that mandatory is being implemented in the servlet, which is probably not where you really want to put it. You, the validation of your input, you want to put it separate. It's a separate concern from the actual servlet, which is like the controller. It's the guy that knows what model is going to help you and what the destination of the view is and all that stuff. Okay, but since we're not using an MVC framework. We're using just a servlet. Notice that the validation is done right here. So again, what happens if you don't get a social security number? Hmm? What happens if you don't get a social security number? You're not going to accept the data, are you? That immediately changes the destination. What does the destination become when you do not get a social security number? Hey, buddy, back where you came from. Get patient record. I did not get everything that I needed. 
go back to get patient record. But what about if the social security number, for instance, this is validating the data, is equal to zero. Or maybe the first name is equal to empty. Or maybe the CD is equal to empty or whatever. This is another type of validation. This is the actual value validation, not the existence existence validation, but the value validation. Then you're going to go back to this where you came from. Get patient record, hey? So as long as I do not get any data or get invalid data, I'm going to send you back to get patient record. And that's all inside the server code. If for any reason you got all the data good, then your destination is going to be post new patient record .jsp. But before you get there, before you get there, okay, you're going to have to populate. You're going to have to populate a patient object. In other words, create a patient object with all this data. So right here with all this stuff is doing the validation. And then when you pass the validation, you're actually creating the object. Once you create the object, then you're telling the servlet, hey, go to the patient record view. That guy is going to give us HTML. Remember the patient record view? That's the guy that has a method that creates, that takes this object and produces HTML with the contents of that object. Okay? And then look at this. It's going to set an attribute, a session attribute called PRV, which will contain the preview. Remember, patient record view returns something. What does it return? It returns. What does it return? Patient record view. It returns one of these guys, a patient record view. Okay? And so this is this patient record view. Patient record view is going to be an attribute of the session. It's going to be passed to the JSP, to the actual JSP, the view. Okay? And if there were any error messages, like in the case where, where you found that, that you didn't get the values that you were supposed to or whatever, you're going to be sending those into the request as an attribute called the error message. Okay? And then you're going to tell, and this is um, the request dispatch dispatcher, it's one of those classes from the Java Enterprise Edition. Okay, the request dispatcher is the guy that knows how to send the um, the view from the servlet. And in this case, we're requesting to go to that destination, whatever we set it as. Either go back to get patient record, or go to post new patient record. Okay. Now, what happens if everything went really good, and we're going to post new record, pa or post new patient record? Do we have that JSP? No, we don't. We're missing all the JSPs, so we better put that. We better put all the JSPs that we need. And where can we find them? We'll find them right here. Post new record patient. So let's let's copy them. We have get PR, get test database, and index. Get PR, get test database, and index. so we need this one, this one, this one, and this one. And we're gonna paste them right here and under web content. Okay. So at this point, and this is something that happened to one of the students when they were trying to create the homework for tonight, he was trying to create a servlet. So what did he do? 
I just created a class. Very well. And he call it, uh, let's say he call it the patient record servlet, which extends from HTTP servlet. Save it, compile it, everything. And then when he tried it, it didn't work. You guys have any idea why it wouldn't work? Correct. The last stuff that I did last week, I was not putting that slash name of the servlet. But, where does the Tomcat look for when you put that my servlet, the last thing in the URL, where does the Tomcat look for to see what kind of request you're asking? Exactly the web XML, the deployment descriptor. Remember, the web XML is an XML file that Tomcat looks for so it knows how to deploy your project. It's called also called the deployment descriptor. In fact, you have it right here. Deployment descriptor. When you create a brand new dynamic web application, you will get a deployment descriptor section which is the same thing as this web XML. If I open the web XML, notice that there is no reference in here whatsoever to a servlet. You have to tell in the web XML that you have this servlet. So I'm going to just copy this web XML from my project. Now, the way you should have done it is create the servlet with the wizard like I did when I showed you the example last week. So you instead of creating a new class, what you do is you create a new servlet. And the servlet wizard will actually update the web XML for you. Or update it manually. It's up to you. So let's paste it. Yes, overwrite it. Like for instance, what I asked you to do for tonight. What did I ask you to do for tonight? A home page. Was anything dynamic about that page? No. It was static. 100% static. If I would have asked you to create the same page out of a database with more than 50% of the content out of the database, then that would have been a different story. And this is the trade that you have to think about Hey, are we going to do this as a JSP or are we going to do it as a servlet? The rule of thumb is if more than 50% of the content from that page is going to be static, don't bother. Create a JSP. If more than 50% of the content from that page is static, don't bother. Create it as a JSP. But if more than 50% of the content is going to be dynamically created, and I'm not meaning coming from a database. It could be coming from a database. It could be coming from uh, a, web, uh, a web service, um, from, 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 from JSON, from whatever. Okay? If the content that builds that web, app, that, that web page is dynamically created out of somewhere else, the rule of thumb says do it as a server. Don't do it as a JSP. Um, change it to. Notice it has a patient record servlet. And here's the servlet. And this is the URL pattern. Okay? So this is the class that represents it. And this is the pattern, the URL pattern that will trigger it. Okay? And I just put one index.jsp as the welcome file. Okay. Now I know I'm missing a cert. And I'm going to do this on purpose. I know I'm missing a cert. It's called a search patient record servlet. So let's don't do anything with it right now. So let's run it. What do you guys think? All this 
creation of serverless and stuff. Do you think it's in there? Let me see. Uh, let's refresh this page. Let's create the test database. See if that's going to run. Ooh, could not add patient, blah, 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 blah. Of course you can't. Can anybody tell me why you can't? See if you got it. Let me see. We're trying to do get test DB. Right? Can anybody tell me what that looks like? Get database DB. It's a JSP that says, hey, I'm going to create a new patient record. Okay. And then I'm going to just call from that patient record. I'm going to call create test DB. Right? Let's go there. Create test DB. Create test DB is going to randomly generate 999 patient records. And then it's going to save each one. What does save involve? Save involves creating a patient record DB and then saving the record. So what does that involve? Saving the record means building the query out of the patient and inserting it. What does the inserting involve? Involves doing a database connection creating a statement out of that database connection and executing the query. But wait a minute. Where are you going? You're going to patient records. Okay. Patient records is the database. Right? First of all, do we know, do we have this package in class? Let's start right there. Well, you know what? This is where we should start, actually. Let's do a search of this. I'm going to do a file search of could not add patient in all of the Java's. And I'm going to tell, by the way, I did control H. It's just an, an excellent, excellent tool in Eclipse. You want to go somewhere in your code where you know the error message is coming from, just do a file search. Here it is. It could have come up out of two places, line 283 in patient record or 316. Let's go to 283, which, by the way, it's a good idea to always show the line numbers and this is one of the Windows preferences thingies um, under editors under text editors make sure you put show line numbers here it is 283 so look at this in creating a new patient record and trying it, trying it to save it, we ran into an exception. And the exception is error could not add patient with that social security number. So we got the patient created, but we couldn't save it. This is why we're going back to, you know, we're going to try to figure out what's wrong in save and what's wrong actually in save record and what's actually wrong in inserting it and what's actually ro wrong in executing the the update okay and I think I'll find the answer right here in the database handler you guys figure already out what, what's wrong with this? No? Not yet? Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Do we have, do we have 
a class called driver? Do we have a class called com.mysql.jdbc.driver? Do we? Remember, we're trying to create a new instance of that class. Do we have it? No, we don't. Nowhere in this project do we have that. We need that library. So where do we find that library? First of all, where do we put that library? We will put it under the lib folder of the webinf. Okay? And that's one of the jars that I'm sharing with you guys that I posted on Moodle. It's one of the libraries that the author shares with us. No, not the author, that I'm sharing with you, because the author n never created his project using MySQL. Here it is, the MySQL connector, Java, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it inside the library folder. There you go. Now, to make sure that we have that jar as part of our class path, we're going to have to verify our build path. So we go into the configure build path and we make sure that we have web app libraries in there. And the, under web, li web app libraries, you should have now the MySQL connector. That's the guy that contains the com MySQL JDBC driver. Without it, you're doomed. You cannot connect to a MySQL database. Okay? So now let's try it again. So back to our query. Let's refresh. Error. We're still getting errors. Why? Can anybody tell me what's going on? All right, we have, we apparently we have the MySQL driver now. We have, do we have the patient records database? Yeah, we do. What are we missing? What are we missing, guys? What do you need other than the database? That's a good question. Very good. What user is he using? Sabrina. Do we have Sabrina? No, we don't. Password. No password. I have root. No password. I'm going to save it. Okay. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it again. This cleaning might trigger a synchronize. When it says synchronize here on, this, on the project under the server, means that it's deploying it. Notice, oh, it looks like it's rebooting the server or re. What is it called? Rebooting the the application. All right, let's try it again. Patient record. Refresh. Ooh! Insert into patient values, blah, blah, blah. Could not add patient. <gasps> Why? All right, now we're getting a connection. Now we're getting the right credentials to the, to the database. But inserting patient, inserting into patient, insert into patient, Exactly. This query is trying to insert into a table called patient. Do we have a table called patient here? No. In fact, you know what? Instead of patient records, I would have called it like healthcare system or something like that. I mean, it doesn't make sense to have patient records as the database name. Please. Yes, it could have done that too. But you could have you you would have had to add the code for it yeah yeah you're right so 
let's create a new table under the patient records and we're going to call it I know what a pain what a pain but unfortunately I could not find anywhere in the project a SQL maybe there is no there isn't <laughs> I cannot find anywhere in the project a SQL backup of this database Unfortunately, so we're stuck with creating the patient table ourselves. So very quickly, what do we need to create? We need to create a social security. And and who do you think will be a what class will tell me exactly what fields I need to create? Probably the patient record DB, right? So here it is. So SSN is Social Security number. And that's probably going to be a string of our char, and it's going to be the primary key. Then we have first name. Also var char. Then we have L name. also varchar and we have address bear with me we're almost done and we're not even trying to determine if these should be another type of another type well they're all going to be varchars <laughs> state zip phone age and by the way what I'm doing is what you guys are going to have to do for next week create the database from scratch date of birth date of birth is also a string. Oh my god, unbelievable. Sex. Kin. Okay. Diag. What is that, Diag? Diagnosis. Probably, you're correct. Now, to make sure that I got everything, H, D, O, B, Kin, Diag, it looks like that's it, right? Look at this. When you create a new patient record, it pretty much uses all these. So that's it. I think that's, that's our... So let's apply changes. Execute it. Okay. What didn't it like? Or char 45. Apply changes. There you go. 
We have patient table with no patients. Now we go back to our get test DBJSP refresh. Look at this beautiful, beautiful. It's adding, adding, adding. 999 of them. You want to see them live or we'll build them? Look at this. Refresh. Here they are. 999 patients on the build. 170. 248 so far. 302 so far. I'm looking down here. Number of rows fetched. 398. All right. So that's working. All right? That piece is working. So the rest of the stuff is just history. The rest of the stuff is just going to allow us to search. It's going to allow us to insert. And that's all done through this four-tier architecture. So what are the two functional requirements that I'm implementing here in this healthcare system? Getting a patient record and posting a patient record. Posting a patient record is asking me for patient one patient information and it's going to save it. Okay? And that's done by the patient record servlet. The patient record servlet, the do post, remember? It will tell, hey, patient record view, create the view out of this patient. And it will tell, hell, hell, hey, patient record, I want you to build yourself with this data. And the patient record say, oh, I know how to do that. In fact, I know who can persist me. And that patient record will use the patient record DB class to persist it. And that's all delegated. And then going back. From the record DB after persisted, it goes back to the patient record method that saved it. And it goes back to the patient record servlet. And then that guy knows where to take the view to. And if you guys remember, the view was a destination. Okay. So at this point we have created 999, as you can see, 1,000 rows. So now we can go back to home page. And now we can do something like get patient record. Look at this. Get patient record will ask me for a patient and I can submit it. And then this servlet the patient record servlet will create a patient out of it and it will tell this patient record view to generate an HTML version of it. And at the same time it will ask for the patient record to persist itself. And then it's going to go back to post patient record. Is that the only functional requirement that we're... No, it's not the only one. There's another one that is not pictured here. There's another functional requirement that is not pictured here in this in this healthcare system example. Um, which one is it? The search. Very good. Let's see what it does when we go to the healthcare example with the four values. Look at this. This one grabbed. Is this the first one? No. But there's suddenly got to be one with one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, it's a default. So I wonder what happens if I just submit it. Oh, patient record servlet. Do we have a patient record servlet? Take a look at the WebXML patient. Yeah, we do. 
So what is wrong with it? Post new patient record. Name was not previously introduced as per JSP 5.3. Oh, okay. So something is wrong with the JSP itself. Okay, but we're we're missing one last functionality, which is the search patient records. If we try that, we're taking to the search patient records JSP. Suppose that we want to search records with social security numbers that start with 101. And then we submit it. What do we get? Eh, there's no search patient record servlet, right? We don't have that. Look at this. Servlets package, we have a patient record servlet, but we don't have a search patient record servlet. So this is the piece that we were missing from the code. So if you go into the servlets, there's a search patient record servlet which we're going to copy into the servlets package. Is that enough? No, it's not. We're going to make sure that we put in the deployment descriptor for that servlet. Other than that, I think we're ready. Look at this. This search patient record servlet is very similar to the other one, the one that gets the information. You decide, hey, this is going to be my destination. It's called the post results. Okay? And pretty much what it's going to do, it's going to get a whole bunch of values from the request, the parameters. And then if any one of those is empty, it's going to go back to the search patient records, JSP. Which it might not be a good idea because I don't want to have to write values for ev every single one of them. We'll see how this works. Okay? <clears throat> I don't know, t but it looks very similar to to the previous servlet. <coughs> Third patient record servlet. And if we take a look at the XML, it doesn't have that search patient record. That's weird. That is really weird. Yeah, but I'm going to have to add it to the to the web XML. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy the entire server and server mapping section. And then add the search word to it. And then obviously, this one is going to be search patient record servlet, and it's actually called records servlet. And the URL I'm going to have to put search patient record servlet. We save it. Let's stop the um, 
the web server for a second. My Eclipse is thinking, thinking. <clears throat> anyway, for so for next week, you guys have a pretty good idea what you need. You need to do the model. You need to do the database, and you need to create your mod your um, pojos, your plain old Java objects, your your beans, and each bean represents one um, table, or it's represented by one table in the database. Okay. Next week we're gonna. Um, I'm going to publish this project complete running on Moodle so you guys can download it, take a look at it, how it's working, play with it. Okay. But the idea is that next week we're going to cover object relational mapping. So once you guys have a pretty good idea what the entities are and the tables in your database, we're going to create the mappings, the mappings that allows us to grab data out of the database and instead of having to create queries and stuff like that, we just have to do uh, communicate with the persistent layer in object-oriented way. So you don't have to do any of the queries, you don't have to do any of the getters and setters of POJOs and all that stuff, create new, new POJOs, you don't have to do that. Okay, the object relational mapper is going to do it for you. And so next week, that's what I'm going to be covering: Hibernate. And I'm also going to be covering JUnit. JUnit is the unit testing framework that you guys have to be familiar because every single piece of code that you create from now on in your project, you have to test it. You have to test that it does what it's supposed to do.